What up, Reef Dudes? You guys have been asking about the hardware in my tank, so today we're gonna do a bit of a tour and I'll show you how guys how my tank is set up and why I do what I do. So over the year and a half of my tanks from running, there's been multiple changes and upgrades, things I've liked, I've tweaked, and certain ways that I've done to bring it to where it is today. So let's take a look and see exactly what I do. Starting with the tank itself, I went with 15 millimeter thick low iron starfire glass. It's starfire on all three sides as this tank is eventually going to turn to a peninsula. So I kind of planned for the future, so I build my tank once and I can use it multiple locations. Now I went with 15 millimeter glass to overkill this tank. I could have got away with half inch or 12 mil, but I had a tank crack and I don't want it to happen again. So I want to be extra thick, extra cautious. There's absolutely zero bowing and this thing is solid as a rock. As you can see for lighting, I have my favorite lights, the Ecotec XR15. So these are beautiful lights. They're tiny, sleek, and they provide a ton of power output, which will grow any curl you can throw at it. Now for mounting options, I didn't like the standard mounts. I mean, they're nice for a standard tank, but if this peninsula, I didn't want to have any equipment on the far end. I want this end to be 100% clear of pumps, mounts, everything else. So I ended up building a custom light rack and I did this using extruded aluminum rail, in which I took apart some of the other Ecotec mounts and mounted my lights to it. So it actually worked out really well and it looks great. So I'm very pleased with how this turns out. I love my floating light rack and I get tons of compliments on it. So it's definitely a winner. As for Hadi and the wires, I, this is actually kind of extruded aluminum with channels. Now to actually hide the wires, most of them are run inside of the channel. I cut little strips out of this plastic to cover it up and I crammed as many of the wires as I could into that channel so it keeps everything hidden and looking good. Because of how much weight is on here, and it is going about five feet out, maybe five and a half feet, I did multiple different ways to strengthen the corner. I have a big plate on both sides as well as a little triangle geist in the middle as well as there's also a screw on the top going down. So I have three different mounting systems. I wanted to overkill it just in case to make sure I would never have to risk my precious fancy lights falling into the tank or hurting my fish or anything else. So this thing is built like a rock. I mean, you can sway a little bit, but on its own, it's solid. Next, let's take a look at the control panel. Looking at the control panel, my whole panel pops off. I went with a two inch steel stand. And what this allows me to do is use magnets to mount all my panels. So it makes things extremely easy to pop panels off and change things in the tank. It's nice, not, I don't even have to have a center brace because this baby's so thick. So we got two inch steel that's powder coated. So this baby is tough. Now, as for my control center, we got our two MP40 quad drives. Uh, these are my original pumps. They do a great job in the tank. Uh, next down below, we have the Ecotec Vectra. Now I used to have a Jabo DC 7000 pump. That worked, worked really well. Absolutely zero complaints. However, there was a slight bit of like a turbine whirly sound. So I ended up getting a really good deal on a Vector M1. So I jumped on it and now this baby is nice and quiet. So if you guys know, my tank's all about having a silent tank. Now this would be my skimmer control. My skimmer has a DC Jabo pump inside and it does a great job. It's extremely quiet. Next, we have this little dinky guy and this is for my reactors. So there's a Jabo pump from my old 30 gallon tank that's now feeding my reactors. Next up here we have our Apex Classic controller followed by the PM1 Salinity Probe followed by the WXM which allows Apex to communicate with the Ecotech lights. Below we have the Apex FMM module which is used for fluid monitoring or their automatic top-off kit. We also just have a little head unit just kind of hanging out here. And I still got to mount this, but this is for the Jabo CP40 gyri pump. Now because my tank's so long, and I really didn't want equipment anywhere else on the tank but that far wall, I ended up using two MP40s on the side and a CP40. So what that does, it gives me enough power to rock the whole tank and get flow on the far end. Now you can see all the Gargonians, everything's getting a nice sway in it. I do have the MP40 pulsing a bit, as well as well, actually the MP40 goes through different modes throughout the day and the gyri does more of a pulse mode. So all that helps me get flow on the far end of my tank. So this is what we call the crazy death wall of flow. Now, if I had these babies on max, I would be absolutely blasting my corals and I didn't want to do that because they don't like that much flow. So that's why I have a mix of two different styles of pumps, the two MP40s and the CP40. 
and it does a great job of pushing water the full length of my tank. And you can see there's kind of a decent wave that rocks up and down on the whole tank. So that's been doing a really good job. I try to get the wave as high as I could without it touching the screen top. So as you can see, there's like half an inch or less at the top of my tank. So it's very tight fit between the screen and the glass. Now what's next? Let's take a look inside the stand. As with everything, the whole panel just pops off for easy maintenance. So we have the control panel in the end cap. We wrap around the side and this is where all the goodies start. Now all my power bricks, everything are hidden behind this little panel here. This kind of just covers it and hides them. You gotta poke the wires in to close it, but this hides everything kind of tucked out of the way. And once that sits flush, it looks actually very clean. Now, if we go down a bit lower, so everything on my tank runs through a UPS. So this will help against any brownouts or short-term power outages. Now, next to this are two EB8. So this is what my Apex controls absolutely every outlet. So I can time, automate any of the plugs on my tank. Now behind this is a 147 amp hour battery and this thing is a beast. And that battery is currently hooked up to the two MP40 quiet drives. So if my power goes out, that battery can run them for about a week. So there's no real worries about my tank ever not having oxygen or flow. Now I also bought the battery booster for the Vectra. So I plan on putting the Vectra on there as well. And then I might lose, be down to a few days, but I've never had a power outage more than half a day. So if I can run for days on battery backup, I'll be pretty happy camper. Now as for dosing, I did have a calcium reactor. I've been in this weird little battle trying up my pH and I was curious to see the difference between a calcium reactor and dosing. So I decided to go back to dosing for now. I'll probably end up back at the calcium reactor in the near future, but for now, we're on dosing. Now I bought the dose for doing automatic water changes, but that's not gonna happen until I move my tank at the top of the stairs when it's in peninsula mode. So for now, I'm using it as a dosing pump, which is one of its main purposes. So these two containers are the one gallon space saver containers, and the first one's calcium, and the second one's alkalinity. So these, I dose calcium throughout the day and alkalinity throughout the night. Uh, the dose does a great job of breaking it up, so instead of dumping in, say, like 40 mils all at once, you do like a mil every 20 minutes or so. So it's just like a slow drip and feeds it throughout the day. So it keeps everything really stable. Next to that, we have the JBO DP4 pump. So this was my original dosing pump, and it's currently hooked up to the Red Sea Coral Colors. I got the ABCD, and they're in my lovely DIY dosing container bottles. And I'll be sure to put a link in the description on how to build those. Pretty easy, quick and easy build. Next we have the Apex ATK Auto Feeder. This thing does work well. My complaint is it's loud. On one side, I guess you know it's working, but it's around 11.30 in the day. It feeds the fish a little snack of pellets and keeps everybody happy. So next in the back we have, there's the Apex ATK Automatic Top-Off Kit. Now I beta tested and did a review on this. So I also have a video I can drop in the description below if you guys want to know more about it. Um, on the left hand side, that float valve is set up to the breakout box. And what that does, if my water level and my sump rises, either from feed mode or a water change or any other type of stuff, it will turn off my skimmer. So it's just kind of one of those little things to make life easier. Now, if we look up a little bit, I have my DIY Chato reactor. Now the Chato reactor has been doing a pretty good job. Uh, it's been on my tank for a few weeks now, I emptied it once. Uh, I haven't actually tested phosphates in a while, so it was doing a good job lowering it, so I'm curious to test it later today, and hopefully it's down even lower. Now below this, this is my newest addition. I picked up another XR15 Pro, and I added that to the frag section. So this used to be my previous refugium. Since I made the shader reactor, I used it as an excuse to free up the space and make a frag rack. I got tons of frags all over my sand bed, and I really wanted to clean up the tank. So having this dedicated frag section is a great way to do it. A uh, nice little tweak I did as well, it's kind of like a refugium, I run the frag light at nighttime. So what that does is help stabilize my pH because I'll have stuff lit and growing throughout the day and nighttime. So I've been really happy with how that's working. I've started to see a little bit of pH boost. Today my tank was actually above eight for the pH and I haven't seen that in ages. So that is an amazing thing for me. So next looking over that little tiny controller that you guys saw earlier was for this Jabo DC pump, kind of hiding in the shadows below. And that comes all the way up to my reactor manifold. Now the reactors feed my, let's go the way. 
there's my DIY dosing containers. They obviously need a bit of a clean. And they are sitting on little pedestals of marine pier to hold them up a bit higher. Now one of them I have carbon in and the other one had GFO. I have, they're both on a fairly low setting. I haven't actually changed the GFO in ages, so it's probably exhausted. Carbon I try and change once every four to six weeks. Um, on the back of the wall there, oh. on the back wall we have the Apex probe. So I got pH, ORP, and salinity. Now if we look at this one, this is my giant, extremely overkill Coral Box Cloud9 skimmer. Now this thing skims like a champ. It's rated for up to a couple hundred gallon tank, so my hundred and something gallon, this thing does an amazing job. And it's extremely quiet, which makes me happy. Next over, we have my overflow section. So, with for this, I have a gate valve on the main drain, so this is a full siphon. So I'm doing the bean animal. The next one over is an emer emergency overflow, and this one is my open siphon, which will turn to a full siphon if the water in the tank gets too high. This last pipe is just kind of a stand for my reactor manifold. Now for heating, I have two Eheim Jagger heaters. I went with two 150 watt heaters for a bit of redundancy and a bit of a fail safe. So my tank overflows, it goes into my single seven inch filter sock. Now if the filter socks ever clogs, the water will flow over the top. Otherwise it comes out the bottom. It passes through a block of marine pier. Most of the water goes into my skimmer or into the pump in the back. Then the water comes up, overflows into the frag section, and the frag section comes up, goes down, over, up, and over. Probably didn't need that second baffle, but too late now. And goes into the Vectra M1 pump. So the Vectra has actually been an awesome pump. It's super quiet and completely controllable. One of my favorite features with it too is when you go into feed mode, it will act, you can set what the water minimum water is. So it will hold it at a trickle rather than letting it blow too crazy or anything else. So another couple of cool things in here is in the back, I have that little air pump. You can see the wooden air stone and this is for micro bubbing, micro scrubbing bubbles. And one of the dosers are on. So as you can see, one of the dosers kicked on, you can see it dripping in the back. So that would be my calcium dripping in. So the dose is doing its thing, dosing some calcium. And we can see that dripping in along the back. Now if you look at the back there, I do have a small Corelia Nano powerhead, and that's right beside a wooden airstone. And what that's for is my micro scrubbing bubble. So again, I'll put a link in the description below if you guys don't know about that. But essentially the bigger air bubbles flow up and the micro bubbles get sucked into the pump and pushed around the pump chamber. And the tiny ones get sucked into the pump and spit up into the display tank. And what that does is kind of turns your tank into almost like a skimmer. So it's gonna help break up any of the stuff in your water, it's gonna help your tank look cleaner, everything else. So back onto the back wall, we have MP41 and MP42 on the other side, and we have a CP40 in the middle. So this is the wall of flow. For my overflow, we have a strainer that is my full siphon. This is my emergency standpipe, and this is my open channel. And so what this does, the water kind of trickles over top and flows in. There's a little valve right here, and if that ever gets plugged or full, it's gonna kill act as kind of like an anti-siphon break. So it's gonna complete the siphon and then allow it to drain really quickly. So I got dual overflows. Everything I do in the tank, I try and be redundant, just prevent any issues. I love the MP40s that there's no cables. Unfortunately, I have to deal with one cable from the CP40, but I was able to kind of sneak it through an overflow teeth, so it wasn't too bad. One other piece of equipment left out, uh, the flipper cleaner. So this is my favorite LG cleaner. There's two little white dots there, and then the razor blade on the top. This thing, the max is a beast. It's extremely tall, strong magnets, and the thing's huge. But the only thing touching your tank are those two white dots and the razor blade. So I've never used the scrubby side of my tank ever. I only ever use the razor blade, and I've never got a scratch. So I refuse to do anything else. This thing's been working great, and it gets off every bit of algae. If you're new to the channel, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this, make sure you like the video. Seeing all these likes and comments really pump me up. And it helps motivate me to keep making videos. Because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. If you guys have any questions at all on anything on my tank, let me know in the comments below. And I'd be happy to make any specific videos or dig into more details on anything that you guys are really interested in. Alright guys, you guys have a great day and stay salty.